I have just enough cherry left over from an earlier project that I think I could squeeze a chair out of it. I ended up making some tweaks to this design as I was building, but something like this was what I set out to make. It'll be my first attempt at a chair, and I've wanted to try out upholstery for a while, so it'll be my first go at that as well. Wish me luck. I started by laying out the back legs using a template which I only made to be able to nest them in the board and minimize waste. I sawed out as much as possible with a panel saw and switched to a turning saw to get around the bends. The inside face of the legs were cleaned up to prepare for mortises using winding sticks and marking the high spots just like when flattening a normal board. I then used that as a reference face to establish a flat spot where the side rails will join to the leg and lastly cleaned up the non-critical surfaces. Next I made a full size drawing of the back ellipse which I could use to mark the precise length of the back rails, ten on shoulder to ten on shoulder. The marks on one get transferred to the other. I then scribed the thickness of the tenon. This piece is actually beech and will act as a hidden support behind the ellipse frame. I had enough length here to be able to cut the tenons as if they were bridle joints, allowing a router plane to rest on both sides of the cheek when truing them up. A Paul Sellers technique I use whenever possible. This is slightly more time consuming than sewing the cheeks, but it makes it so easy to get a perfectly smooth tenon. The extra length is then taken off. I now marked for the mortises in the legs, measuring 18mm from the edge. Since that's the distance I figured out I would need to make the tenons meet inside the leg and therefore maximizing their length. I could use the template as a story stick to find the vertical position of the mortises and the tenons themselves to mark their height. And here's the back legs and rails dry fit. Back to layout and sewing now as I needed sides, front and front legs. I took the legs from the edges of a flat sewn plank and the rails from the middle to get rift and quarter sewn components respectively. The side rails need to splay out from the back so I set up my bevel gauge to an angle I had copied from my drawing. This is not a specific amount of degrees, it's just the angle formed by the depth and width of the chair. I didn't film planing these parts, we'll go straight to laying out the tenons. These are a new type for me, being not coplanar with the faces of the component. I drew the angle at the end and measured the tenon length from that, and then knifed in the shoulder. I marked the tenon location sideways, and then mostly out of frame, because I am stupid. Okay, there we go. In frame this time, I used the end of the ruler to scribe the tenon square to my angled shoulder line. The same process was done, but angled the other way on the other side rail. In this view, you can also see how I used the mortise chisel to get the width of the tenon. 
Many light passes is key when scribing this, so the knife doesn't wander off and push the ruler, acting as a square, out of alignment. Sawing it out is not very different from a straight tenon, but I can't use the router plane due to the angle, so I'll saw it as close to the line as I dare and finish it up with careful chisel work. And now it's just the mortise left to do, this is chopped straight down as usual. Here I'm trying to show how the mortises meet inside the leg, it's kinda hard to see but that allows the tenon to be as long as possible. Speaking of which, the tenons need to be mitered so they can go all the way into that internal corner. The back rail is easy enough to mitre on the shooting board, which I recently upgraded with this plane by the way. It's been out of stock for ages and ages and I was finally able to buy it, it was actually my payment for the Live Edge dining table from last year and it was well worth waiting for. The angled tenons are a little trickier, it could be done on the shooting board with a wedge to match the angle, but I decided to freehand it instead since this is not a critical surface. The point here is not to have a perfect mitre, that will not really give any benefit, just to give the tenon as much glue surface against the mortise walls as possible. Next I moved on to the front legs, flattening and squaring up the two inside faces. I cut to size the tenons that will go inside these legs. and then marked out for the mortises, lining up the top of the inside rail with a mark I took from my front leg template. And here the front legs have joined the fun. I check the splay here by measuring to the tip of a square and comparing both sides, since the clamps could easily pull one side more than the other. But it looks good, so I then took a couple of sticks and found the length of my front rail. I could measure it on the drawing, but my tenon shoulders are seated and I don't want to risk messing with that by putting in a theoretically perfect front rail that may not be an exact match with reality. So this part is the front rail, I'll center my measuring sticks and mark the shoulder to shoulder distance directly off of them, then square the lines around and make a couple of tenons. Thank <laughs> you. 
transferring the tenon position to the leg blanks, referencing the top of the rail again to the knife nick at the top of the leg. One fun thing about these intersecting mortises is that you don't need to go perfectly to depth with a mortise chisel since the bottom of one mortise is the wall of the other so you can come in with a paring chisel like this and take out any remaining fibers in the internal corner. Alright, time for curves. The pattern is drawn onto the leg on all four sides, making sure to orient it correctly. Most of these lines have to be redrawn later, so they could be skipped now, but I did it as a sanity check, you know, so I don't make the leg backwards or something. I then saw the flat spot at the top with a panel saw, and slipped the turning saw into the cut to continue onto the curves. I did some rough flattening but no smoothing yet and redrew the lines I had lost before cutting out the next curve. Then I smoothed the cuts with the leg in a bar clamp that in turn is clamped to the bench. These faces don't have to be square at all, but I checked that I wasn't too far out. I wanted to keep the appearance of squareness. Some parts of the curve were too tight for the spoke shave, so here I used a rasp and where the knee meets the flat in a sharp corner, I took some paring cuts across the grain with a chisel. Both cases were then smoothed with a card scraper. I'm going to carve the feet as well, but at this point I hadn't yet decided on their design, so I moved on to curving the side rails. With a ruler against the side of the leg, I marked where the curve should come to a flat, and then I connected the lines with a freehand S shape. I don't need a pattern here, as one rail can easily be the pattern for the other to make them identical. Should really have sharpened my smoothing spoke shave here. It's weird how that is so obvious when reviewing the footage, but sometimes it doesn't occur to me while working. Oh well, got it done, and then I copied the shape onto the other side rail. The front rail is a little different, I again marked where the curve should terminate, but then I want to make a symmetrical sort of double S curve. I divided the length into four equal parts, next I made a line halfway between the highest and lowest points on the curve, so that where this line crosses the three perpendicular lines is where the curve changes direction. So now the shape is divided up into four segments that each consists of a simple arc, and together they form a symmetrical sweep across the whole front. It would absolutely work to do this with other methods, but I really enjoy the freehand drawing for these somewhat organic shapes, even when I want it symmetrical. At this point I had made my mind up about the feet, so I got the front legs back in the bar clamp and grabbed some gouges. 
I considered trying a ball and claw foot, but figured I should probably try a more basic lion paw or something like that before going there. I went with three toes and worked from a mental image, tweaking the design as I carved until I reached a shape I liked and felt happy with it repeating on the second leg. Cherry is so unbelievably nice to carve, I am very glad I picked it for my first go at this type of foot. And here then is my very advanced method of copying the shape, it's a highly sophisticated technique called eyeballing it. All that is left for part one of this build is shaping the back legs, which began by finding their width, setting up a marking gauge to fall in that scribe line, and planing the outside face down to the gauge lines. The back also got smoothed with a spoke shave. I measured the depth of the mortise hair and marked it on the outside so I don't go too far and expose the joint. Then I drew another pair of S curves. With that done, I drew a scroll shape on the upper end of the leg, very similar to how I did the feet on my elliptical coffee table. When your bench doesn't accommodate holdfasts, you have to be creative with clamping. I wanted to go for something more like a snail shell rather than the violin-like shape I did on the coffee table and I think I accomplished that but it did look better in my head. I don't hate it but it's definitely a bit off and I'll have to do a better job in the design and layout steps if I try this shape again. Finally the back legs get tapered on the inside. And because I like to end an episode with some form of glue up, I'll put the front legs and front rail together. The rest will have to wait a bit, but we'll have another look at the whole thing dry assembled in a moment.
And that is where I'm going to call it an episode. Here is a look at everything we have so far. As you saw, only these two joints are glued at the moment. I can't do the rest quite yet because before gluing the back legs together, I have to make an ellipse here. So that is what I'm going to do in part two, along with, well, gluing the side rails in place as well, of course, and then some little knee blocks here that finish out this curve and blend it together and also add a little bit more support um, for these pieces so that when you're sitting on the chair the entire weight of the person is not bearing on only the tenons but also those blocks which will be glued to, um, to the inside of the leg here. And I will also do the upholstery, the cushion for the seat and in the ellipse in the back as well. One final thing though, I just want to draw your attention to something I noticed. It looks as if the legs are a little bit darker than the front rail here. It's not quite as noticeable on camera, but uh, you can especially see it on this corner. However, if I turn the chair sideways, now the front rail appears a little bit darker than the leg instead. So it's not actually a matter of the components being different colors, it's more a matter of chatoyancy, the way that the light reflects off the grain. I guess I'm just wondering if any one of you has some ideas about how to deal with that. You know, when you have to have the grain going vertical on one part and horizontal on the other, how do you get a nice color match here? If anyone has some knowledge on that, I would love to hear your thoughts, if you have the time to share them. But yeah, that's all for this video, so um, I'll see you soon in part two, and hopefully get this thing finished.